Let me know when you're ready. All set. So will this be webcast? Then? Yep, it'll be webcast and we'll transcribe it as well in Boston Phoenix and okay. WFNX Radio in Boston. Okay. So live at Coachella, um, here with Tim Booth of the band James. Just finished up a set on the main stage. Uh, how have things been treating you so far? Very good, lovely. Um, you know, Coachella, you don't know what to expect. Yeah. We didn't know if we'd have friends here. Or, um, and the last time we played an American festival, we toured Wallapalooza. Mm -hmm. and we, Whiplash. And we were, I had Whiplash, yeah. uh, ruptured discs, and we were opening it to a call in four years. I was at that. Who loved it? I believe I believe you mentioned something. You, you called them your produce friends. Will be out in a second. And you said you came on stage and you said we like to start with something slow, so you expect the worst. And opened with out to get you. Right. And everyone was just. I think there were bottles like over my head. And yeah. Sort of yeah, we had quite an interesting time with them. They were they were all call, calling us faggots after about the first two days. So I went out and bought. We bought dresses. We bought sparkly tops. We thought we're going to be faggots. We're going to be faggots. And um, we, we looked the part. And then after a couple of days, I, I'd find myself walking out to them while they were screaming abuse. And I'd go and sing to them. Mm -hmm. And they'd be on the big screen, cameras on them. And they'd, they'd, the first time I did it, this guy had been screaming, you know, you suck. And he, after the, the song finished, he said, would you give me a hug? <laughs> and I was like, oh. So I, says, I would go around the whole auditorium to the people who were screaming and throwing things at us and sing to them. And they didn't know what to do. Because yeah. I didn't go with aggression or right. hostility. I'd just go, I'm coming to sing to you. We are James. And they'd shake hands and I'd sit in their laps, I'd take their drink. Mm -hmm. And it was really cool. And Korn loved us. I was going to say, did you have any interaction with Korn? They, they would come out every day and watch from the side stage wow. to see if I survived. Wow. And then at the end of the Lollapalooza, they asked us if we would be their support band and tour America with them. Wow. And we said, thanks, but no. <laughs> I think we're done with your audience. They were a fun crowd to convert. They were a fun <laughs> crowd. But I don't think we converted them, but we certainly um, showed them what faggots were made of. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> how, did, how did these things compare to the UK festival? Um, so, I mean, Lollapalooza was, I think, what, 97, 98? Um, Lollapalooza, I think, for James, was a kind of hell on earth. We, yeah. we were at our worst state mentally, addiction-wise, and, you know, in terms of the damage, people were in a real mess around the Lollapalooza. So Lollapalooza was just bizarre. I was in a neck brace, looked after by a nurse every day, because if you blew on me, I was in hospital. Wow. Um, and uh, it was just tough. Uh, English festivals really vary. Some are really good. A lot of them have become very corporate and boring and anal and you know, we like, I like to go walk about in the audience yeah. and they get upset and we drag people on stage and they get upset and we're like, fuck off, you know, yeah. this is a festival, we know the roots of this is, this isn't about health and safety, right. this is about passion and connection and communication. This seems fun, yeah. they let us do our thing. And you did, you had a bunch of people on stage for I the finale. I got people late. on stage and I got in the audience and they were cool and they didn't rip me apart and yeah. it was cool. So it was nice, and it looks nice. We're going to stay next weekend so we can see Radiohead. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so I'll, I'll chill out more and enjoy it next weekend. Now, Coachella this year is, is going to be two weekends in a row at the same festival. Are you going to tweak anything for the second show, or is there anything that you kind of learned on the fly here, or what works with those things? I don't know. I mean, in James' mythos, we change the set every night. Yeah. Uh, you know, we have 60, 70 songs, and we change them around because we like that freshness and we think it's good for an audience and we improvise because again an audience recognizes when something is spontaneous yeah. and it makes the gig special it isn't just a theatrical performance that everybody else is doing which bores the pants off me yeah. um, but we have been, t you know, we know that it will be a totally different audience next week mm -hmm. so maybe we'll be fairly similar yeah. I don't know it's against our better nature yeah. you know, we kind of want to fuck it up basically Right. so we'll see so you have seven days now in between Coachella sessions. We're playing gigs. What are you touring. doing in between? We're touring. Yeah. yeah Where we're are you going to? Vegas tomorrow. Vegas. San Francisco, San Diego, kind of we, things we, in the in We the toured with Neil Young yeah. many years ago. And when we played Vegas, he said, don't tell anyone that I played Vegas. And, we, and it wasn't on the posters, it wasn't on the tour posters, it was like a detour. You know, it right. was bizarre. He was so embarrassed to be playing Vegas. Are you telling people you're playing Vegas? I'm, I'm telling people we're playing, we're playing Vegas. <laughs> It's a strange place, it really is. Yeah. 
how do you how do you approach a, a festival performance like this? The music of James is very intimate, uh, if you if you want it to be. Um, do you kind of just say, you know, what, we're in an open field, we're playing, you know, at, at five in the afternoon. Fuck it, let's just rock it out. It has to be totally different. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it has to be. It's um, uh, it's slightly lowest common denominator. You haven't got your hardcore fans out there right. to the same degree, and you want to win round people who probably wouldn't give you a second chance anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there, having said that, lowest common denominator, we played a song from an album that was an improvised song, uh, which nobody knows. We played the, the song we ended on, probably no one in that audience had ever heard. It's, yeah. it's only ever been released on a live album. So we took some risks, but we, we chose muscular songs right. that would grab people by the throat rather than, you know, our, our more seductive, tickle them very gently under the chin right. and see what happens. Do you notice their ears perk up when the first few chords of Wave start oh, cool. to play? They say, hey, I know this That's song. The second they go, why are they doing that cover? <laughs> <laughs> Little do they know, it's our song. Have you, have you um, I don't want to say come to terms because that's the wrong word, but you know, Laid has this thing in America. It, it, it was, it really, you know, it was on the American Pie soundtrack. You can hear it in, in the new one. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. you know, is it weird to, to come over here and say, wow, they, they know this one song? You know, but here is this whole other catalog. We've been a band for so long. We've been a band for decades. Here's what what else we have. Do you try to win those people over you, or do you just just, just say, "Here's Laid. Here's what you came for." It really varies. Uh, the first two gigs on this tour, we didn't play Laid. No. The third gig, we played a slow acoustic version, uh, and then we played it yesterday as the second song, and then we played it today. It kind of varies. You know, it. Um, I, we don't get upset about it at all because. We've had about 80 hits in different, and certain songs are bigger in, big, in other countries. So we go to Portugal, they have to have some song that's right. their big song. We go to Greece, they're getting away with it, it's their big song. We go to England, it's sit down. Mm -hmm. uh, and here it's laid. In England, laid was not that big a deal. Right. Uh, and, I, and in England, she's a star was a big deal, mm -hmm. and that didn't get anywhere here. So what's nice is you go to different countries, and it's the emphasis is different differently on our catalogue, so it gives us the opportunity again to play a re show a really different aspect of ourselves in mm -hmm. whichever country we're in. Yeah. The, the last record, um, Morning After, Night Before, felt like this very triumphant comeback. Um, it, it, it seems like James has kind of settled into this period of kind of revitalization a bit, and, and when I watch you on stage, you're having so much fun up there. You know, you, you're just seeing everyone dance around. Have you hit a kind of comfort zone? You know, you feel like maybe the storm has passed? For James, and you're kind of in the clear now. And wow, that's a good question. Um, I don't. This has been turbulence. It is being turbulence. Yes. Um, we are getting on great, and in terms of the appreciation of each other and what we're doing, I think it's the best it's ever been. That's a nice feeling. Yeah. I think there's a there's a sense of agitation amongst us that we aren't recognised quite as much as we should be. Um, you know, we, you know, for whatever reasons, we didn't get huge in the States. Thank you, Danny Goldberg. Um, <laughs> and it, it, it kind of pisses us off to see lesser bands doing better than yeah. us, or bands that have been hugely influenced by us yeah. doing really well. Do you come here with a chip on your shoulder? We have a bit of a chip on our shoulder. Yeah. It's the Manchester thing. Right. Uh, and so there's some aspect of us that wants to prove something still, I think. Or make a, make a great album. I mean, how great would it be to surprise everyone? I mean, I think we feel we're like Lenny Cohen, um, in that you know you, we can be neglected for twenty years, but eventually people will turn around and go, "Shit, they were good." Yeah. How did we miss that? You know, Lenny Cohen got slagged off for twenty years by the media, right. ignored, and then now he's seen as the rightful god that he is. Yeah. Um, and I think we kind of have a bit of a chip on our shoulder in that respect. You know, it's like Coldplay, Chris Martin says he, he, he became a singer because of us, and, and lots of bands have said the same from, you know, Blur and Oasis, and, and it just kind of feels sometimes that, that well, when we, we want another time, we want to, and also, when are those bands going to help us out? Right. You know, if they're all <laughs> saying nice things about us, you yeah. know, hey, we, are. we could do with a support tour, right, or, for you hire. Know, something like that. Yeah, yeah. We're for hire, it's <laughs> guns for hire. So, you know, we have, we have a little, we, we're still edgy, and, and it still means, that, therefore, we're hungry when we make music. We want to make that song that knocks the walls down. Yeah. 
Um, we haven't made it again yet, so we're still looking. What's next? What's next for James? Looking for that song that knocks the wolf down. Yeah. Um, and you're just waiting, really, and seeing whether, you know, the media is very fixed, obviously, in terms of age and mm. how, thing, how music is perceived. And it would be lovely to see if you know, prove everyone wrong. Are you are you making music for the fans, or are you you're still looking to? Kind of it always them? has to be for us. You, we can't. We improvise, so it has to be whatever turns us on. But when we go to South America, to young teenagers and twenty year olds, got in, they got into us very late in South America, and big audiences like twelve thousand in Mexico and the world in Chile and South Africa. Where have they come from? It's, it's very a mystery what what turns an audience on and what music can be. It's just a strange fact. So in England, the audiences are forties and fifties. Right. South America, they're in their teens and twenties. It's just bizarre. Yeah. It's cool. Have you have you seen anything at Coachella so far? Is there anything you're looking forward to? Not yet. Is this a DJ? I don't know what's going on. This can't be. This can't be. That's the way. Ah, uh, 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 they're not on the bill. Um, sticking around for pulp. Stick around for pulp. Yeah, that's pulp. That's another another triumph. And uh, Coachella has a soft spot for for British pop. For, for pop. But last year I saw Swain uh -huh. right here in, in one of the tents, and that was it was amazing. Did they get it? Uh, fantastic. Did, was that with Bernard? Butler? No, Bernard still doesn't want anything to do with it. It's still Richard Oakes on guitar. You know, Bernard still has a stance. Saw so Pulp uh, a couple days ago in New York City, and it just felt like they never went away. They great. It was great. It was fantastic. All mid nineties, all entire different class. As well. so, and it's great to see bands like that be you know, triumphant on, on the main stage. You know, it's great to see James on the main stage of Coachella you know, showing the new jacks how it's done. Who's this? This is the Arctic Monkeys. Uh, that's who this is. It might be. Yeah, Arctic right. Monkeys. So, being drowned out by the Arctic Monkeys. Speaking of new jacks, as it were. Uh, Tim Booth from James, Mike Morano from the Boston Phoenix. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Well, as always.